My soul is longing and yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to our lasting life. Let us pray. May your unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church. And since without you she cannot stand or secure, may she be always governed by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master, for through him the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now the Arameans had captured in a raid on the land of Israel a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king of Abraham. I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman set out taking along ten silver talents 6,000 gold pieces and 10 festal garments. To the king of Israel, he brought the letter which read, with this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you that you may cure him of his leprosy. <clears throat> when he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garments and exclaimed, Am I a god with power over life and death, that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note. You can see he is only looking for a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king. Why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots 
and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. The prophet sent him the message, go and wash seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will heal and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord his God and would move his hand over the spot and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the Farpar better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this, he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, wash and be clean, should you do as he said. So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel, the word of the Lord. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O oh God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Then will I go into the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I hope in the Lord, I trust in his word. With him there is kindness and plentiful redemption. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue in Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there are many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath, in the land of Sidon. Again, there are many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophets, yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Cyrene. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Our gospel talks about people who were foreigners being healed by God, whether it was through the miraculous cleansing of the leprosy, or being able to be fed during that time of famine. But it's the reminder that the people of Israel are still called by God. People who are Christian are still called by God. Though our Lord goes out to those who are not originally from the covenant, does not change the covenant with those who have received it. And for us, too, as we have this great occasion during this Lenten season, as we prepare for the season of Easter, we're reminded of the catechumens and those preparing to enter into the church. And it's a reminder that they are now being called, as we have continuously been, been, so we have been continuously called to serve the Lord, that we we're reminded of that call in that Easter vigil, we're reminded of the call in the words of our gospel, that the Lord is calling us to himself. And at times that call can become a, a hum or a droning in our lives where we are able not to hear it anymore. But the Lord gives us chances to wake us up like the season of Lent to be aware of what we are called to do. We're called to a relationship with God in prayer. We are called to purifying ourselves in that way of fasting, and we are called to charity towards others in that way of almsgiving. Those are those great reminders to what we've been called to do, what we continue to be called to be as other Christs in the world, as Christians. So my dear sisters and brothers, let's continually heed the call that God has given to us. Let's continue to use this time of Lent to remind ourselves of who we are and through that may we continue to build that relationship with the Lord and continue to purify ourselves so that in that we might be people of charity to others. And in that way, let us, as we continue on this Lenten season, let us also look to that rejoicing that we will receive and have as the Lord is resurrected in the Easter season. My dear sisters and brothers, with attention to the prophets of God, let us offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. That the people of God may be open to the Gospel's challenging word, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the elected candidates may receive Christ's word of healing and forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. Lord that officers and all who serve in the armed forces may defend the weak with special care, we pray to the Lord. Lord that refugees and prisoners of war may be heralds of God's message of peace in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord that we may never fail to receive God's message of repentance and renewal, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the sick may be refreshed in healing waters, we pray to the Lord. Lord 
Let us pray for Joseph and Leona Karabatha, for peace in our world, especially in the Ukraine. We pray to their Lord. Lord that the dead may find welcome among the prophets of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for your own intentions. For the end of abortion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For these prayers and prayers and sounds of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Wash us clean, God of the River Jordan, and turn our hearts to your word. May Easter find us ready to renew our baptismal call, that all the earth may come to know your healing grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will be come for us, the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed are you, Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord has set the sacrifice in your hands for the glory of the glory of the Savior, for our Lord and the Lord of the Church. May what we offer, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed into the salvation, the sacrament of salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to be thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, our God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. By the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks for it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer the Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to have held us worthy to be in your presence and ministry to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring you to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Hugh, St. Paul the Sixth, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May marriage be co heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. That not in our sins, but on the faith of your truth and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Amen. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, for his merciful love towards us is great. Let us pray. May communion in your sacrament, we pray, O Lord, bring with it purification and the unity that is your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Bow down for the blessing. May your right hand, we ask, O Lord, protect this people that makes entreaty to you. Graciously purify them and give them instruction, that finding solace in this life, that we reach the good things to come, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is in you. Let us pray a Hail Mary for the needs of our church, of our world, and of our the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Feel this prayer for our mother and mothers. Mother and mothers, Holy Queen, chosen before all women to be the mother of the Son of God. Mary, my mother, who in your maternity have so sanctified the state of holy motherhood, imploring thee I come to you, humbly I beseech you, confidently I trust in you. I know that you can, by your powerful intercession, help me in my need. In you I take refuge, dear Virgin, for in needy I place my hope entirely in you. I relinquish all confidently in your hands. Betray not my humble trust. But hear my petitions and come to my aid, dear Mother of Mothers. Mother of Mothers.